to me, gardening is expression of oneself. And, you know, in Taoism is to live in harmony with the universe. So in my art, I express that through my gardening. Today, we talk about what it means to live in peace in a world that is filled with so much noise and trauma. How do we live in peace? The Zen garden is the perfect example and way to live, and that is what we're gonna be discussing today. Today's video is sponsored by mulliganbrothers.com, as always, where you can now get the Not A Journal. But I also want to ask for your support at mulliganbrothers.com for the new Still T-shirt that is gonna be going on sale, where all the revenue from the T-shirts, not profits, all the revenue, because Mulligan Brothers is covering that cost, will go to my son's charity, the Jacob Mulligan Charity, where we attempt to provide as many headstones as possible to parents who have lost their children. When my son died and we buried him, Unfortunately, it was such a shock that we did not have money for a headstone and it's not provided by the UK government and that is why we have started this charity to provide as many headstones for bereaved parents as possible. No parent should bury their child and I feel that we should support them. So if anybody wants to help support us, there's around 60 to 100 t-shirts available where we will get this charity started with that and we hope to provide a few headstones to get going. Thank you as always for the family support at Mulligan Brothers. We love you guys so much. But before that, how do we live in a world of peace? Especially when there's so much trauma around us, especially when these difficult times like losing loved ones happens. This is one of my favorite videos that we have done about the Zen garden and how we can try and live in harmony in the world. Let's jump into the video. In Samurai culture, it's about having a Zen garden, right? Because, you know, a, a warrior, and, you know, a samurai is diverse in education, diverse in the, the abilities to be a warrior, the weapon handling skills, the tactics, the strategy. But also, you know, we, we like to balance ourselves with um, poetry, with art. And gardening is, is one of the things. To me, what gardening brings is Zen, right? It brings beauty. In this world, don't you wish to leave what is beautiful? You know, don't, don't you want to come in this world and leave this world leaving something that's beautiful? You know, and that's what to me gardening is, is to be an artist, you know, landscaping, to be an artist, to see what is not even there, right? And then to sculpt it out of the dirt to build this beautiful landscape that you could sit in and feel presentness and joy, right? And accomplishment. So what landscaping brings me is just that, it's uh, pride, right? Pride in your, your artistry. And for me, landscaping and gardening is the two full ways of a samurai. Balance violence with what is beautiful. And gardening too, to me, it brings me to a state of zazen, you know, the state of presentness. When you garden, if you're in total focus of everything that's going on, then you're in total mindfulness of the beauty that you're creating. So that's what gardening does, right? It, it creates beauty and you're so mindful of this beauty and you're creating what is art and you're giving that to the world, creating more beauty in the world, right? So. Gardening is uh, a warrior culture. You think about even in the Spartan culture, you know, in the knight culture into the samurai culture, you know, they talk about farmers, you know, so when, when um, warriors in the past will fight past wars, they'll come back and they'll farm because one of the healing process I feel is that we connect with the earth. We connect with the universe and, and gardening allows us to do that. To me, gardening is an expression of oneself. And you know, in Taoism is to live in harmony with the universe. So in my art, I express that through my gardening to flow with the universe. And to flow with the universe is to take the elements of earth, water, wind, and fire, 
And then you, you implement all these into the Japanese garden, right? So for me, the flow of things is, is just that. It is, it's the flow. It's like, you know, we're, we are an entity that's flowing through this universe. And if you go against the universe, if you go against the flow of the universe, then the universe will punish you back in karma, right? If you flow with the energy of the universe, right? Let's just say the energy of the universe is to be kind to others, show gratitude. And then you you flow with the universe, you're like, fuck you, man, I hate this, I hate... Well, you're going to live in a life of suffering because you're going against the flow. So in Japanese gardening, it illustrates that, the flow and the harmony with nature and creation and the universe, you know? So when you sit in this place, first is your art, right? But when you sit in this place, you should feel all, all of the elements in one place. You know, in my Zen garden, in a Japanese Zen rock garden, you know, you have your different sizes of rocks, your different textures of rocks, you know? And for me, when I design it, the bigger rocks was what I perceive as land. And the thinner rocks that I could mold was what I perceive as water, you see? So when I draw my water, it depends on my mood, right? And if you look at my garden, in any Japanese garden, you'll see a structure and then you'll see a ripple around that structure. So to me, what it means is in one lifetime, in one lifetime, we're given one life in this universe. How many people can you touch? How much ripple effect can you cause on this world to affect the others? and help out others, right? So in my Zen garden, I have the ripples around the structures, the art, the plants, the rocks. And it reminds me when I meditate, the ripple effect. Each human being, each person affects others. And the ripple effect, the ripple effect can allow us to, to live in a, in a kinder, in a kinder world. Yeah, you know, when you affect one person, they, they want to change. They're going to, they're going to work on themselves. You know, look, Confucius said, if you want the world to be a better place, it starts with you. And if I touch somebody, then they can reflect on themselves. And if they want to make themselves better, then they, then they make themselves better and then they can help somebody else. And that ripple will affect somebody else and that ripple will touch somebody else. So the thing is just that is that for me, I realized at a young age because Bruce Lee affected me. He touched me. He touched me about equality. And the thing is when I started traveling, you know, 27 countries and fighting for the press, every, every life, every life, every community, every country, every person ripples, ripples into the next. You save one life, you free one person from enslavement, it ripples through generations. And in time, in time that we live this way, won't we have a better world? If you made it to this point in the video, I just want to say a massive thank you. For me, we live in a world where there is so much noise, there's so much trauma. We create difficult situations. We create hard times for ourselves as well. We need to be able to look at ourselves and decide to live in peace and harmony. It is, in, in, for so many, a difficult choice to make because we have no awareness when it's so noisy and bright in this world, we think that we have to be on that kind of fre frequency, we have to be on that wavelength, but we can choose peace and harmony. Today's video was made possible by mulliganrush.com. The new journal, the Not A Journal, is available, but I want to ask for your support over this next coming month for the new still t-shirts that are available. There are only around 60 to 100 t-shirts available and Mulligan Brothers is providing them. So I want to say a massive thank you to William and Luke as well for supporting me on this endeavor. This charity is very close to me. When my son passed away, 
I had no money. I had no finances to provide a funeral. And unfortunately, we were unable to provide a headstone for Jacob. He still doesn't have a headstone. It's something that I'm working on. But at the moment, I want to start this charity to provide headstones for parents who have lost their children. No parent should bury their child. And that is why we've started this charity. It's why the Jacob Mulligan charity exists. It's why the still t-shirts exist. So all the money, 100% of the money, not the profits, all the money goes to these headstones. So thank you to my brothers um, and thank you to you guys for supporting us. They might not be live yet, but keep your eyes peeled. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me for your guys' support. If you want to see more of that, you could head over to Instagram and see the at Jacob Mulligan charity. I'm not posting that much on there yet, but you can see more from me at Jordan Mulligan Brother. And we've got some lovely fundraising stuff coming up, some world records and some endurance events that would make um, Goggins proud, I would hope to think. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled and I'll see you in the next one. Hope you have a blessed and peaceful day. I'll see you in the next one. I said it twice. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.